Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Now today is part two in our BMS design series. In part one we determined the power requirements of what our battery pack will need to do. We uh, tested all of the power tools in order to determine what the load profiles needed to be and that video will be here uh, in case you missed part number one. Now in part number two we are going to be designing our cell stack or our core. We're going to be picking a cell, uh, putting them together in series and determining what our core will look like and what its electrical capabilities need to be. Now it's important to take time when you're designing your core or your cell stack for your battery pack. Uh, there are a lot of things to consider. You have to decide on what chemistry you want. You have to decide how many amp hours, how many watt hours do you need? Uh, do I need to look at the cell's internal impedance? Do I need to worry about the temperature range of the cell? What chemistry do I need to pick? All of these things are very important when you pick a cell stack because the last thing you want to do is get into production and you've made this beautiful core with this certain cell chemistry and it's a wonderful thing and you're halfway through production and then you figure out that you and the cell, the chemistry is just not compatible and no matter how hard you try to work it out, the product just isn't, it just, it just isn't working guys. It just doesn't work and you end up getting kicked out of your house and you, you end up uh, not being able to see your kids and you end up living in your car and you just end up living all alone because you just weren't compatible. Jennifer, if you're watching this, I love you so much. Please take me back. I promise I can change. <laughs> The first thing we need to do when designing a cell stack or designing a core is to pick a cell. And a lot of times picking a cell can be a quite a difficult task. Uh, five or six years ago, there weren't that many options if you wanted a top tier cell. Uh, but now there are hundreds and hundreds of options uh, of picking a uh, lithium based cell for your product. So let's go through exactly what you need to do and what you need to look for whenever you're picking a cell for your application. So the first question you have to answer when designing a cell stack is what chemistry do I need? What type of cell am I going to pick? In this application, we're going to be using a lithium ion cell, a nickel manganese cobalt type of cell, which is uh, one of the most common cells still made today. But there are some other options that you can use. Uh, the second most popular is lithium iron phosphate or LIFEP04. So you, you need to determine what chemistry of cell that you need for your application. So let's just look at these two chemistries the most popular and see what the differences between them are. Now the first difference between these two chemistries is their electrical properties. So looking at lithium ion, uh, typically your peak charge voltage is 4.2, nominal voltage 3.6 and then your end of discharge voltage will be 2.5. Whereas uh, for lithium iron phosphate, 3.65 volts per cell will be your uh, peak charge voltage, 3.2 will be your nominative vo nominal voltage, and between two and 2.5 will be your end of discharge voltage, depending on which type of cell uh, that you pick. Uh, but the biggest difference between these two cell chemistries is their energy density. So let's take a look at the, the two sizes of cells uh, for any application. So if we look here in the camera, uh, uh, in this hand is an 18650, and this is a 26650. This is a lithium ion cell, this is an LGF1L, and this is a K2 Energy 26650 cell. These two cells are the same exact amp hour rating. They are the same exact amp hour rating, but one is almost twice the size of the other. So what application would you possibly want to use a lithium iron phosphate cell in versus a lithium ion if the energy densities are so drastically different? Well, lithium iron phosphate was made as a drop in replacement for lead. So in a lot of uh, lead acid 12 volt applications, you can make a core and drop it right into a lead acid application. This is a 2650 lithium iron phosphate core stack. This is a four series, a uh, six parallel 12 volt core that is a drop in replacement uh, for a lead acid battery. This is also a a 4S3P high power uh, core that is a drop in replacement for a UPS battery. So um, 
those applications is where lithium iron phosphate shines because uh, lithium ion cells, even though they are much more energy dense, uh, they also do not have as many cycles. So uh, you'll get about three to 500 cycles out of a good lithium ion cell before you'll start to see capacity degradation uh, very severely. However, with lithium iron phosphate, you get one to 2000 cycles before you start to see extreme capacity degradation. Uh, however, you also sacrifice um, a whole lot of room in order to use this type of core. So uh, let me show you these two cores here. We'll bring over to the camera right here and I'll show you these two cores. These two cores are roughly the same electrically. These two cores are uh, roughly the same um, watt hours. However, you can see how much smaller this core is than this core. Now this core does have some uh, better amp hour rating because it has three more parallel cells. But if you take and you cover these cells up, you can see how much bigger this uh, stack is than this stack. If we put them here on top of each other, uh, ignoring these uh, these cells, you can see how much bigger this is than this is. So uh, depending on your application uh, is uh, really what kind of cells you need to pick. Now the cell we're going to be using for this application will be uh, a lithium ion uh, NMC based cell. It is a Molly Energy INR 18650-P26A uh, so it is an 18650 size. I did uh, want to use one of these type of cells, which has become very popular. Uh, this is a 21700 cell. This is a P42A uh, compared here to an 18650. It's slightly bigger, um, both in uh, width and height. And uh, they're roughly one and a half to two times the energy density of a normal 18650. And uh, they have a much greater output current rating. However, I could not fit it into the case. Uh, so again, picking a cell, um, you also have to uh, look at size. Um, the size, if you're working in a, uh, a already determined space, the size matters quite a bit. Uh, and so, uh, unfortunately, I could not fit five of these down in that case, so I'll be using the uh, 26As. Uh, I didn't use the 28As because we didn't have any in stock. We have the t plenty of 26As. Which brings us to today's sponsor, of course, Pro Technologies Incorporated and my employer. Uh, if you follow me on LinkedIn, which you should, the best LinkedIn profile there is, I post all the time about uh, what I do here in the lab, designing my BMS systems uh, for our products here at Pro Technologies. And, and they have graciously agreed to sponsor this video series. They're providing the sales and everything I need to make the BMS is up and everything. So I'll be taking from our PTI inventory in order to uh, um, get some P26As. So I'm very thankful they've provided it. If you would like a battery pack with a BMS designed by yours truly, uh, we are a custom battery pack manufacturer. Um, so uh, you, if you need a battery pack for your application, call us up. We'll design one. I'll design a BMS to go in it. And so if you need us, sales at protechnologies.com. And please tell them that I sent you because I need some validity uh, to my YouTube career because it's lonely. Staring at a camera. Not knowing if you, anyone loves you. Not knowing if Jennifer still loves you. Now the next thing we need to do is determine what our cell stack up uh, will look like. So uh, what will our core look like? Uh, how will the cells be glued together? What shape do they need to be? So uh, looking at this pack here, this pack is just a brick. It's six cells um, long, four cells deep, and one cell high. That, that's what you got. It is a uh, 4S six parallel battery pack and um, just as simple as it can be, 24 cells. However, if we look at this cell stack here, this cell stack is a little different. Uh, this cell stack has been put together and welded like this flat with uh, four different uh, three cell uh, parallel pucks uh, with a strap in the middle and then folded together like this in order to make this core. So uh, sometimes when we're designing a battery pack, we have to do uh, put the cells together, not in a brick type of configuration. So uh, looking here at our case, uh, 
and we need to put five cells in here. This was what I came up with, this triangle shape here of the cells. Now these are just some scrap 1866 cells that I threw together and glued together. And my thought is I'm going to take them and put them in just like this, scoot it all the way to the front of the pack here, if you can see that, uh, scoot it all the way to the front of the pack, and we're going to put the BMS right here. Now if you notice, it's not sitting in there all the way flat. It needs to sit in there, you know, like this, but it's not sitting all the way flat because of these screw bosses. Uh, for some reason, the bosses go all the way through. I assume that was for uh, the ease of the tool manufacturer. So I'm just going to take and trim these bosses down in the bottom where the screws do not engage. So looking here at our core stack, this is how I have it glued up. Three cells on the bottom, two cells on the top. So if we're looking here and this, we say this is our positive most point, this is our 18 volt point, and we need to weld all of these in a series connection. So we're going to go zigzag just like this, except it'll be front and back. So the first tab connection will be here on the back, weld up like this, and then, and then zigzag here on the front here and then zigzag on the back here, and then finally back on the front here uh, to where the end of this cell, the negative of this cell will be our negative most point. So we'll have our positive here, and we'll have our negative here, and then we'll have our sense wires coming off. Now when designing a battery pack, I want to warn you very heavily that wires have dimensions. Even though you can 3D model up a core, and you can 3D model up a, a BMS and you have your case, you have sense wires and you have your main power wires that come out of your core. So just remember, if you're designing a battery pack and you design up the core, you need to make sure you determine where the wires are going to route in this core. Now, fortunately, in a core like this, there are spaces in between the cells where you can put 22, 24 gauge wire and fish it through, and then you have valleys that you can lay your wires in and Kapton tape down. Um, but sometimes you just don't have that luxury. So you need to make sure that you remember that wires have dimensions. Uh, so you don't get into designing a whole entire battery pack and you have no way to connect your BMS to your core stack. Uh, thank you so much for watching part number two of my BMS design series. I hope you gained some knowledge about picking a cell uh, for whatever your battery application is. If you like today's video, please leave a like on the video. Uh, please share it with all your friends and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you think I got it right, leave it down in the comments. If you think I got it wrong, leave it down in the comments. Whatever your opinion is, controversy is very good uh, for driving traffic to the video. Also, part number three of my BMS design series is already in the works and should not take near as long as part number two did. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned. Also follow me on LinkedIn where you'll see all of my BMS design updates and what I'm working on here in the lab uh, to stay tuned for what's going on at Pro Technologies. Again, thank them for sponsoring today's video and I will see you in part number three.